Welcome back to the video series on the Play Framework using Scala. In this video, we continue working on our third edition of the playlist. In this version, we are using Ajax calls, but instead of sending back and forth HTML, we want to do all the communication in the form of data through JSON. So previously, we set up some routes and we sent some data through JSON. In this video, I actually want to start doing the main page for for this version and we can talk about exactly how I'm going to set that up and how it's going to be different from what we did in version 2. The fact that I am building the page in code using the JavaScript HTML is is going to impact how I want to do things here to try to keep it so that the the burden of, of writing JavaScript is is uh, acceptable. So this load I want to make an action that has an implicit request and it's going to give us back a view. And you know what? The stuff that I want is actually very similar to what we had done for version 2, except I'm going to make a version 3 main. And I actually don't need a start string here. One more close parentheses. Okay. Uh, so we need a view for version 3. I'm actually going to copy version 2. I pasted it. And let's rename it. So I don't want it to end in copy and I want it to be version 3 and we got rid of the argument so that needs to go away we have a 2 here that needs to become a 3 we have a 2 here that needs to become a 3 uh, since I got rid of the start route we'll get rid of that and just so that something pops up let's do that Okay, uh, small steps and run it. So instead of pulling up data here, let's pull up load three. Compiles, excellent. So we got version three in a, in a div. Okay, what I actually want to have happen for this, now these routes will change because they won't all be task list two, but I'm not gonna delete them for, for the time being. Uh, it's possible they will be helpful to us in our uh, JavaScript code. So what I want to do is I actually want to bring in the login that we had for version 2. So this code here. And we're going to include it. For right now, I'll just go ahead and add some stuff. Uh, sure. I'll make a div that has an ID of login section. And I'm going to put all of that HTML inside of here. So that the page itself will have this login uh, with the the buttons and text fields set up. It's trying to call login and create user. Uh, probably want to change this so that will introduce an error for us to a version 3 of the JavaScript code. That doesn't exist yet, uh, but it will just be an error in the browser. And right now we're just trying to get things set up. And then I'm going to add one more div in here. And this div is going to have an ID for the task section, which I may or may not use. And I want it to have something much like what we had for our tasks. Actually, let's see, logout can be at the bottom and always visible. Wait, no, now I think about it that does go inside of there because you can't log out unless you are logged in. Sure. Copy. 
and paste, except for this section right here, which isn't going to have any tasks. We don't know about anything. So let's make an ID of task list there. This will need to be a version three, which means that it won't compile until we put in a route for that. We'll, actually, I guess I could leave it as version two for the time being, um, just to make sure this compiles. And the thing is, I want this second section to start off as not being visible. Let's see how many things we are referring to that don't exist. Okay, apparently nothing. So right now, the when you go to this primary page, you just see a login page. And what I intend to do programmatically, because the server is not going to send us back any HTML. It's just going to give us back data in the form of JSON. So if it tells me that you have successfully logged in, what I'm going to do for the user interface is to hide the login. So we called the login as the login section. So we could do document dot get element by ID of login section dot hidden equals true. And it turns out that will hide that from us. And then we can bring up their task list section. So the task section and set it's hidden to false. And so programmatically, we can switch which view the user is seeing without constantly communicating back HTML. Version four of this, we're going to use React. And React will primarily change what's happening on the, the front end so that we aren't having to do things like document get element by ID and manipulate things manually. So this set up the view. We kind of have things in place where we want them. We'll come back and we'll start talking about how to communicate back and forth between the client and server and how to deal with the JSON messages that go between them.